Stern Pinball. The last manufacturer in the United States making pinball machines. Their latest addition? Family Guy. A game I just had to own. Not only is Family Guy a license I absolutely love, but it is being developed by one of my favorite pinball designers, Pat Lawler. And yes, that's me and my goofy grin as I met the man himself. I have numerous games by the Lawler team in my collection, including Earthshaker, Funhouse, The Addams Family, and others. So, what do you get when you mix one of my favorite television shows with one of my favorite hobbies? <laughs> well, you get an empty wallet. But, I'm buying it anyway. Now the game is delivered and ready to open. Let's see if my excitement is justified as we take a closer look at the Family Guy pinball in my game room. Oh no, I get a fret, but I don't know which way to lean. The setup begins by opening a single flap. On any new game, the first thing you'll see is the cabinet. With Family Guy, the colors are bright and the familiar characters are well represented. Stern's low resolution printing is not that distracting and the artwork overall is eye-catching. Though I must admit, the coin door area is rather uninspired. But if the goal is to get someone to notice the game, they have already achieved this with the cabinet alone. Stern packs their games rather well. They even include an instruction sheet for a proper setup. <laughs> yeah, screw that. Now that's better. On the playfield, stapled to the inside of the cabinet and in the coin box. You'll find some extra goodies. These items include various paperwork, operations manual, collectible keychains, numerous replacement stickers, and much more. Now the game is finally on. The first thing of notice are the character figures scattered about. You'll also notice the major toy at the top right, Stewie's Pinball. The rest is filled with the usual targets, ramps, bumpers, and more. Just like the cabinet, the playfield colors jump out immediately, and the artwork suits the license very well. The dotty look on the plastics only detract when viewing close up. At first glance, the playfield seems rather barren, with many shots hidden by the mini playfield. However, it is definitely one unique design. Well, the look of the game definitely gets a thumbs up. So the question is, how does the game play? Let's check it out. Well, we can't start a game without installing the balls, replacing the glass, putting the game on free play, and finally, pressing start. Gosh, I'd like to help you, Peter, but uh, I've got to go out in the hall and chew on the back of my ass for about five minutes. Scanning the playfield, there are many avenues we can take. Beer can modes, TV modes in the scoop, fart multiball via the drop targets, Stewie pinball, and many, many others. Let's take a closer look at them all. The beer can modes begin by slamming the beer can a set number of times. Each completion awards one of five modes. The most significant is Lard Multiball, which is a simple two ball fun fest. Every lit shot scores a jackpot. Giggity Giggity maximizes the pop bumpers and every hit accesses a quagmire quote. 
Remember When relates to the various flashbacks from the show. Starting this mode, we'll light a Hurry Up Award located at a random family member shot. Happy Hour is a timed frenzy, which doubles all playfield shot values. And Collect Beers will award you points based on the number of beer can hits you have accumulated. Starting all beer can modes does not award anything in particular. Hits to the can itself register rather well, with only weak shots often failing. Glancing at the dot matrix to see how many shots remain can lead to down the center drains. The modes often start without your knowledge, making me wish for maybe a sound cue when a mode is only a hit away. Overall though, the beer can is a fun distraction and a nice touch. Shooting the lowest spinner will light the TV mode in the scoop. Each mode relates to an episode of Family Guy and they picked some doozies. Good Old Boys is from To Love and Die in Dixie, one of my favorite episodes, where Peter and the family go into witness protection in the Deep South. Shooting a flashing shot will award a jackpot. Super Griffins is from Family Guy viewer mail number one, where the family gains superpowers. Shooting each lit character will activate their superpower and award a specific score. Chicken Fight relates to the numerous episodes featuring the endless fisticuffs between Peter and a giant chicken. Hitting anything on the playfield will add a punch. Defeating the chicken will award millions. Sexy Party was first seen in the episode From Method to Madness. Stewie, well, has a sexy party with women in lingerie chasing him around the room. Shooting the lit targets will award you points and add another sexy girl to the lineup. Finally, Ipecac is from the episode Eight Simple Rules for Buying My Teenage Daughter, where the gang has a vomit contest to see who wins the last piece of pie. Unlike Dixie, this is one of my least favorite scenes from the show, but it is slightly less disgusting in the game. Ironically, none of the TV modes are multi-ball driven, but are rather timed sequences. One is not automatically lit at game start, adding a nice touch of challenge right from the get-go. The better you do on each mode, the more points you will accumulate toward TV Wizard mode. This is the final TV mode, which is awarded after completing the others. It forces you to make a number of jackpot hits, and then shoot the scoop to reset. It is very intense, making it one of the most exciting wizard modes to come around in a long time. All of the TV modes are unique in their own way, and achieving the wizard mode makes it all the more fun. Fart Multiball occurs after knocking down a set number of F-A-R-T targets. This is a two-ball multiball, very similar to lard multiball, but instead of shooting lit shots, a set number of playfield switches will award a jackpot. Stewie Pinball is the main gimmick of the game. Hitting the lower captive ball will spell out another letter in Pinball. And this is where the fun begins. The goal in Stewie Pinball is simple. Spell out each of the family member names. Doing this will reward you with Stewie Multiball, an intense session where multiple balls are shot onto the lower playfield while the upper playfield remains active. During Stewie Multiball, completing the characters on both playfields will light the super jackpot. What jackpot? Sound easy? Well, not necessarily. The pinball itself is a scaled down version of the real thing and it feels like it. The small flippers have different ball control than you would expect. The unique ball physics make the experience very enjoyable. The playfield is well designed and the insert LEDs are impressive. The numerous levels of Stewie Pinball ensure boredom will never surface. It is truly one excellent toy. Other features that need to be mentioned include the plunger skill shot, 
the Drunken Clam Mystery Award. The Death Target. The Flipper Save Post. The Bonus X Multiplier. The Pirate Target. Meg's Stationary Target. The Super Jackpot Lane. And the Main Ramp, which houses the Evil Monkey Flap. Crazy Chris Mode. And the lighting of the extra ball. <laughs> I said ball. Attention restaurant customers. Testicles. That is all. Family Guy is one of the best stern pinball games to be released in quite some time. The overall art package is beautiful with only a couple of minor letdowns. The sound is fantastic with an amazing amount of voice clips that are staggered enough to keep from being repetitious. Gentlemen, that was a fart. The Dot Matrix display has some great animation and character designs. The game itself plays solid with nice flowing shots. The barren playfield proves to be chocked full of exciting loops, targets, and hidden treasures. And with the addition of the final wizard mode, Sperm Attack, the game has more features than you can shake a stick at. Family Guy is an entertaining game that everyone should enjoy. Whether you are a fan of the show, or just a fan of the silver ball. Well, Family Guy gets a thumbs up all around. If you find one, play it. Now, it's time to make some room for the next game in my game room. See ya.